Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Mr. Ainsworth here, and we're going to go through uh, how to develop a concept sheet of most of the concepts you learn in Chapter 7 on mortgages and home loans. And there was a lot. Okay, and so last week here, I went through this spreadsheet here, and I showed you guys how to take the mathematics that you were learning through Chapter 7 and apply it to a spreadsheet. And we programmed how to calculate a down payment, okay, not using Desmos, but using Excel which is a Google Sheet program or Excel spreadsheet program. Here, and I show, showed you guys how to write formulas in Excel or Google Sheets, as they call it, uh, in the online platform, and calculate the down payment, okay, the monthly payment, uh, given a term in an APR, uh, the new monthly payment if, if discount points are purchased, okay, which is in this upper right-hand section called discount points. And sometimes if the closing costs uh, are not affordable or you don't have enough money to afford the closing costs, you can purchase negative points. And we talked about how to program that too as well. And then we talked about how to calculate monthly expenses and how to convert annual to monthly simply by dividing each one by 12. That wasn't hard. And then we talked about how to uh, calculate your monthly housing budget range, which is section one, seven one in your, in the textbook, in the workbook here. And then of course, in section three, we talk about how to, uh, the qualifications for a home loan and how to calculate what are called the front end and the back end ratios. So from the spreadsheet, I designed this. And this is some, this is uh, what you guys need to learn how to do for all your classes, not just mathematics. Okay, to take a subject uh, and mind map it, okay, and create what's called a concept map or a mind map right here, uh, covering all the all the basic concepts in the chapter. So I looked at the spreadsheet and I found all of these different concepts within the spreadsheet, covering all the sections through chapter seven. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is just show you how how it's done, how this mind map is formulated, and then you guys can learn from it and then apply the same sort of idea to chapters two, three, and five, because your final, which is tomorrow, all right, covers chapters uh, two, three, five, and seven. Okay. So since we just started the spreadsheet or ended the spreadsheet, which by the way should be turned in already, so make sure you do that, uh, I came up with all these concepts. So, so let's go through all the basic concepts so that you learned. Okay, so here we go, monthly, how, monthly housing budget. This is from section 7.1. We talked about how to get a low end and a high range. And the low end is 25% of the monthly gross, okay? So 25% of the monthly gross income. So you want to multiply that. So the monthly gross income, you want to multiply those two things. So you change 25 cent uh, as a decimal, 0.25, multiply it by your monthly gross income, which obviously they're going to uh, tell you what it is, unless they give you an annual. And then of course you divide that by 12 to get your monthly gross income. This was on the uh, our quiz during the middle of the chapter. Okay, and it might be on the final, who knows, right? So you got to study everything, and you got to be prepared for everything. A high end is 30% of the monthly gross, and so any financial advisor will tell you that you should not spend more than 30% of your monthly gross income on a home or rent, either one of the two. Uh, if you do, if you go over 30%, you're more than likely going to get into financial hardship, and that won't be any good. Okay. Now, to qualify for a home loan, you need to uh, satisfy the debt to income ratios and the first one's the front end uh, ratio here which takes in uh, account three of your housing uh, expenses and divided by the monthly gross and it has to be less than 28 percent so what are they well you got to take your monthly payment plus your property taxes your monthly property taxes and again this all has to be uh, converted to monthly right so property taxes plus okay your homeowner's insurance all right, you're going to divide that by your monthly gross income. And again, all of these have to be converted to monthly. Okay, so I'm going to put that in red. Okay, convert to monthly. Okay, one of the most common mistakes made the first time around was that people use the annual numbers and then you got the problem wrong. Okay, you got to convert annual to monthly simply by dividing by 12. We talked about that in lesson 7.3, so go check your workbook out because we did it. So you got to take those three expenses, called the housing expenses, and divide it by the monthly gross. And this has to be less than or equal to 28%. 
This is a max. If you go over that, no bueno, okay, and the, the bank will not lend you the money. Now, the back end ratio includes the car and the credit card payments. So in this one here, there's a little bigger ratio here. You take the uh, multi-payment plus your multi-property taxes, okay, plus your homeowner's insurance. So you take the three that I just talked about, but you throw in the credit cards, CC, and you throw in your car payment. And again, these are monthly numbers, right? And you divide this by your monthly gross income. But this ratio is bigger, and this ratio has to be less than or equal to 30, oops, 30, 36%. This is a max, and you cannot go above it. If you do, the bank will not lend you the money, okay? So again, you want to develop a what's called a concept map or mind map. And this, this technique here can be, I used to use it in all my classes when I was in school, and I developed it for biology and anatomy and different math classes and uh, it could be literally used for any class that you had. And what you want to do is come up with everything you need to know in word or concept form and have it on one piece of paper here so you can have a quick reference. And even if you couldn't use it on the final, like some classes don't love it, uh, is a good thing to do anyways because you have to study and got to memorize it, right? And so one of the things you have to do is learn how to organize it in a understandable way, okay? Now, when it comes to down payment on a house, you always have to put 5% down minimum. Okay, so this is a minimum number. Okay, and you multiply that by your purchase price of the home. Purchase price. Okay, you simply multiply that. So you change your 5% as a decimal, 0 0.05, multiplied by your purchase price, and that is your down payment. Of course, you can go higher than 10%, or excuse me, 5%. 5% is the minimum. You want to try to get up to at least 20 if possible, in a real situation. That way you can uh, avoid what's called PMI. And if you do that, that's a good thing for you because it's less money out of pocket, okay? The loan amount, the loan amount is your purchase price. Purchase price, all right, minus the down payment. Simple stuff, you know, it's adding, subtracting, multiplying, okay? But if you don't remember the concept, well, then you, you can't even solve a simple problem. And that's why these concept maps called mind maps are so important, guys. So important. Okay. Uh, what's next? The monthly payment formula. Okay. We, most of you guys have this memorized, but let's go through it again here. You're going to start off with the principal of the loan. You're going to multiply that by R divided by 12 times 1 plus R, the interest rate, divided by 12. All right, raised to the 12T power. You see a bunch of 12s in here because it's monthly, guys. Okay, in general, it's N, but we're not doing the general case. We're doing the monthly case because that's how you pay your bills. Okay, you pay them monthly. Okay, so you have that monthly payment form and memorize. You're going to use it a lot unless you use Excel, of course. And the Excel formula, well, that is a little bit simpler. It's negative PMT for payment, right? And it needs to know three things. It needs to know the monthly percentage rate, which you do, you take the annual percentage rate divided by 12, comma, all right, the number of months, comma, the loan amount, called the principal loan, okay? AMT is amount, all right? And so that's for Excel users, okay? And I showed you guys that in your Excel program right here. Remember this section right through here, this is negative PMT, all right? And again, it goes, uh, it's the monthly percentage rate, not the annual. You got to take the annual divided by 12, and then you got a comma months, and then comma loan amount, okay? LA for short. There you go, and I showed you guys that in our Excel program. Okay, by the way, I would use your Excel program on your final. <laughs> Make sure you design it correctly. Some of you guys didn't, okay? And I told you guys that, and I had sent messages back to everybody, and, and if you just uh, typed in some numbers, which some of you guys did, and you didn't program with formulas, well, guess what? You got one out of 10, and I said redo it correctly. So do it correctly, and it could be to your advantage because uh, it can solve a lot of the problems on the final. So it's worth it to learn how to do it correctly, number one, and then have integrity and do it right, and then use it correctly on the final so you can, like, ace the final. That would be... That'd be really nice, okay? 
Now, from every monthly payment, all right, it, your monthly payment is divided into two parts. Part of it goes to principal, which means it goes to the bank, and that's calculated by taking principal times rate times time, all right, where T is equal to 1 12th, because we're talking about one month here. All right, 1 12th. Let me write that a little better there. There's 1 12th. All right, and this money goes to the bank. All right, that's how they make their money, guys. All right, the other part, if you take your monthly payment and subtract the interest, you get the money towards principal. And notice what I just said. You take the monthly payment, MP, and you subtract the interest, which goes to the bank, and the rest of it goes to principal, and that gets to pay off your loan, right? And then your ending balance is, well, it's the beginning balance, right, minus the money towards principal, which is which we just calculated above, money towards principal alone. All of this we did in our Chapter 7. We used Desmos initially, but like I said, uh, this right here, this spreadsheet, man, it's a powerful tool, and... Uh, also, the, the other spreadsheet too, the amortization spreadsheet, which I don't have on here, uh, I would use that too because guess what? That can solve a lot of problems too. All right, let's go back to our concept map. Okay, so where are we? So we're down here. So remember, this is from section seven four. Remember, this is a this is a, just a screenshot of what I what I showed you guys initially here. The monthly payment is always divided into two parts. Part of it goes to the bank. It's called interest or finance charge. And then the rest of it from the monthly payment, which you find by subtraction, goes towards to pay off a loan, okay? Because you have to pay your money back, okay, that the bank lends you. Okay, now let's go into section five a little bit and talk about discount points and negative points. This is section seven five. Here we go. So the new APR, uh, well, first of all, let's write down what the discount points do. It's, it's intended to reduce, okay, reduce, which means decrease, Right, the APR. And why would someone want to do that? Well, it brings down the monthly payment, right? If you reduce the APR, that means your monthly payment MP, that decreases as well. So lower APR, lower monthly payment. Higher APR, higher monthly payment. Basic concept. The new APR is equal to the old APR, all right, minus the number of points times the discount percentage. Number of points times your discount percentage. Again, we've done this many, many times in your spreadsheet. We talked about how to do it here as a formula. You can't see the formulas here because it's just a screenshot. But we talked about how to do it in Section 7.5, so refer back to your actual lesson in your 7.5 workbook. And then, of course, look at your formulas because guess what? We programmed it. And all you do is type the, <laughs> the number of points in your spreadsheet, the old APR, and I'll calculate it for you. And I'm telling you, this spreadsheet is a killer uh, uh, thing here for you guys, and you don't realize how powerful it is. So make sure you've done it right and then use it to your advantage. Okay? The cost uh, of the loan is your number of points all right, that you purchase all right, times your loan, times 0 0.01, excuse me, times 0 0.01 or 1% okay, of your loan amount. So times loan amount, okay, not purchase price. The loan amount, that's after your down payment. So it's the number of points times 1% or 0.01 times your loan amount. Go back to your lesson, that's what we did. Okay, and then the break-even month, well, that's the cost of the points, which you just calculated right there. Cost of points, PTS, all right, divided by your monthly savings, which we talked about here too, okay? So you have to know how to calculate your monthly savings. And then once you know your break-even month, you divide the break-even month, all right, simply by 12 to get your break-even year. Now, if you purchase NAVA points, you do that to cover the closing costs. So the reason to do that is to uh, cover the closing costs because you don't have the money. All right, that's the reason. That's the purpose. Okay, every loan costs anywhere from ten to forty thousand dollars to close, depending on how expensive the home is. Well, and that costs money, right? The bank's not going to do it for free. But if you don't have the money, you can purchase negative points. That's going to increase the APR. Okay, so it increases the APR and your monthly payment. They both go up. Okay, increase means it goes up as opposed to down. The new APR is your old APR. Okay, plus now, okay, because it's going to increase, 
the number of points purchased, number of points uh, purchased times the increase percentage, okay? Increase percentage. And in our class, that might be 0.125%, okay? Uh, in reality, it's usually an eighth of a percent, but you know, you have to read the problem and they'll tell you what it is, okay? And then the cost is very similar to what I've said earlier here. It's the cost, it's the number of points, okay, that you purchase right here times 1%, or commonly known as 0.01 as a decimal, all right, times your loan amount. AMT is loan amount. Okay, there you go. That's sections four and five right there. Uh, and then let's see what else, what else? Ooh, oh, yeah, prepaid interest. This is section four as well. So ignore this right here. It's a little typo right there. So what in the world is prepaid interest? Well, guess what? If your loan closes before the month ends and you get to go in there, uh, before the month ends, you have to pay the interest up front. It's called prepaid. Pre meaning before you get in the house, okay, or before the loan, actually, before you make your first payment, basically. So the number of days left over in the month. And so what you want to do is take the number of days, number of days, okay, left in the month after closing, left in the month, okay, after closing, and they'll tell you when the closing date is. You want to take this and you want to multiply it by what's called your daily interest, which we talked about how to calculate. So the daily interest, which is found by taking uh, the principal times rate times time. But you got to be careful here. T is 1 out of 365 because we're talking about the daily interest, right? One day out of 365 days. Because remember, in the formula, the simple interest formula, principal rate times time, T is always in years, and then one day is one out of 365 years, okay? That's a reference to one day. Okay, and if you go back into your workbook in section 7.4, find that problem. We did it multiple times, and then we practiced it, and we reviewed it, and so all you have to do is practice it again, okay? And then your, your monthly housing budge, budget, uh, oh, you know what? That's repetition. I already did that. Okay, it's the 25 to 35 percent. So low is 25 percent. Okay, of your monthly gross. I'm going to write it down again just for funsies here. And then your high. You don't want to go over 30 percent of your monthly gross. Okay, income because you're going to get in financial trouble. So just remember to convert to monthly here. Also, go into section. I forget what section this is. There was all kinds of problems that were that you might see on the final. So you got to prepare here. We did this problem a while back. It involved uh, Desmos here because you're going to use Desmos. There's uh, this was the moving problem where you actually had uh, moving expenses. We talked about that. And then also you might want to do uh, include the linear regression because we talked about that as well. And so that needs to be put on the concept as well. So you'll notice here we have linear regression right here through to here too as well. So you have to remember how to input data. Uh, you also have to remember the linear regression form, which is basically your slope intercept form here. Correlation coefficient is R. And so you have to remember how to do all that in decimal. So this was Desmos here, obviously. We use that for you know pretty much the entire year with the exception of this last week using Excel. So there needs to be some serious study involved because look at this, that's a lot of concepts, guys. And if you don't have everything memorized, I suggest that you put some effort towards this because your final is a doozy, chapters two, three, five, and seven. Okay, and there you go. There's a little taste of how to do a concept sheet right. Uh, and again, I just used the spreadsheet, but of course you can go back to your workbook and cover sections one, two, three, four, and five. So sections, seven one uh, oh not two excuse me three and then four and five only go back and write down your concepts and you know what did you learn but put it in word form and so because of the numbers change but the concepts don't and do this for all chapters chapters two all right whole page on chapter two and then three and then five and then you just got seven done here all right hopefully that helped you out I'm um, trying to show you guys how to make it what's called a concept map or a mind map. 
to represent all the things that you learned throughout the chapter. So to get ready for your final, which is tomorrow. So make yourself proud. Get started. Go back to chapter two and do it on your own. See you then.